Okay, good morning and welcome everybody. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Rick, how are you? Good, good, feeling blessed. Happy to be here. Good morning. Let me just, okay, there we go. All right, hopefully okay. no echo. You hear me okay? <laughs> I hear you good, yeah. Excellent, okay. Welcome. Welcome to Songs of Psalms. Thank you for being Songs here with Psalms. us yes. this morning. Absolutely. For everybody that's tuning in, y'all, this is the Christ Jam edition of Songs of Psalms. And so I I just want to welcome Brick here. I'm going to introduce him in a moment. But um, I want to welcome everyone that's going to be watching this. If you're watching it live or you're going to watch it on the replay, I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. I am MRJ. And I'm about to introduce you to an incredible young man that you need to know, you have to know. And if you didn't know him now, you have no excuse. You're going to know him today. Um, and he is joining me here on Songs of Psalms for this special Christ Jam edition. And we're going to talk a little bit about what this edition is. So finger snaps for Rick. For <laughs> Um, and before I tell you a little bit about him, let me just tell you why we're here. Um, for those of you that are not familiar, Songs of Psalms is a journey that I'm, I'm on personally. It's, it's a personal um, journey for me. We go live every single morning and we do a deep dive on the book of Psalms. Um, we pick one, one chapter a day, but the last couple of weeks, we, we've been sticking around. We've been kind of lingering on, on just a chapter. So we're not doing a chapter a day. It's been taking me a week or so to do a chapter. We've been on Psalm 90 for a couple of days already. And if you're asking why the Psalms, well, to me, I felt like the Psalms contained the greatest repertoire of songs about life, about struggle, about faith. And, you know, we all have moments when we're struggling with something. Um, there may be a struggle when someone does you wrong, right, and treats you wrong, and, and people that want to see you down instead of seeing you lifted up. And there's a lot of that in the Psalms. Just read the Psalms of King David. People were always after him, trying to put him down, trying to take him off of his place. And so he, I believe that he faced more persecution from within his own camp than he did from like the nations that surrounded him. So he wrote a lot of Psalms about that. There's a lot of Psalms about fear and uncertainty um, sickness and death. There's songs about joy and gratitude, praise and worship, songs about wisdom. So the Psalms has so much in it. And I felt like from a songwriting perspective, I needed to, to understand how those original songwriters wrote. So I've been exploring the Psalms for a number of months now. And, and it's, transformative for me I've been I've changed I, I, I see things differently I understand how you can create meaning out of something that you don't understand and so for me I did it from a, a, a personal development point of view and so I've been on this journey and today we wanted to take a little bit of a break from our usual uh, diving into a psalm and I wanted to bring on Rick Montero, who's here with us today, and I'm going to just shut up in just a moment, and I'm going to let him speak, but he is our special guest today, and um, I would say that he's a songwriter, but I don't know, I'll let you answer that. Would you consider yourself a songwriter? Um, right, yeah, yeah, I've been writing songs, I've been writing songs all my life, there you know, you I started, yeah, I started, um, I started recording professionally, uh, you know, you know professional recording studio at the age of eight you know i was i was, I was just in about I remember uh, it was like four fifth grade you know and and i just ended up falling in love with music uh you know this was this was back on a lot of people may not know now but this was back when uh chris cross was out you know which was a group around my age at that time and um yeah man as soon as, as, soon as i learned the language because you know, I came here from Dominican Republic in 1989. Uh, I was about seven years old, you know, and I immediately just, you know, just caught on. I just, 
just caught on and then I, you know, I seen the culture, you know, the music. So I, I started, you know, just dancing to it. I didn't speak the language. So I knew, you know, the beat to make me dance. I didn't know what they were saying. Uh, but, you know, as a, as a child, like, you're learning language pretty fast. So, right. you know, I learned English. Yeah, I learned English pretty fast. I learned English. Um, I just I just started, you know, I just fell in love with me. I fell in love with music. And the way I started writing uh, wasn't necessarily like a pen and a paper. You know, um, we would go to BJ's. As a kid, you know, we would go to BJ's and they had this, karaoke machine there i still remember it was york karaoke machine you know tape player around that time and you know when a lot of kids was asking for nintendo they was asking for certain uh you know video games i wanted that york karaoke machine that was my dream you know so i told my mom i said <clears throat> excuse me i said uh you know i want you to buy me that karaoke machine it came with a microphone and i was just in love with it so, uh, yeah, for one of my birthdays, my mom gave me the uh, karaoke machine. And the way I started songwriting is is amazing. But, you know, we really didn't have many resources. So you kind of got to, you know, uh, just improvise and come up with strategies. So the, the karaoke machine had a recorder and, a, you know, and a player. So what I would do is I would record myself beatboxing, you know, for those who don't know what beatboxing is it's like I'm making a beat out of my mouth <laughs> so I would record like five minutes of me beatboxing then I'll take the beatbox put it on the play side and I'll rap over my beatbox you know and it was just I mean I still have those tapes like I literally still have those tape recordings so I would spend endless days endless nights you know just um improvising freestyling uh, whatever came to my mind uh, and then I would just play it over you know and, and this this continued for years till um the way I started recording in a professional recording studio you know it's amazing because I used to grab the yellow pages you know now you could just go on google there's many ways to find information but you know around that time everyone would receive this big thick yellow book so I would go in the yellow pages and I would look at, you know, look up recording studio. And once I find some phone numbers, I'll just call and try to find an opportunity. You know, I would tell them, hey, listen, I'm only nine years old. I'm eight years old. You know, I, I love I love rap music. And, you know, I would continuously, some, you know, some would pay attention, some wouldn't. But then one day I just got blessed. You know, I made a phone call uh, to this one recording studio in North Elden name uh white pelican production eric jacobson and when i rapped for him over the phone he gave me a meeting he said hey, listen come to our studio when i went to the studio they gave me a recording contract for you know my first demo wow and, and um, how old were you again uh yeah I, I at that time i believe i was about nine my goodness yeah i was about nine you know so eric jacobson and his brother you know just they believed in you know they, they they saw the dream they saw the passion and they had their own recording studio so you know they signed me for a demo deal and from there that's when you know everything got professional and they showed me the art of songwriting they were you know major songwriters like uh they would write and produce songs for a lot of soap operas like the young and the restless you know and and, and a lot of soap operas um so they really knew song structure they knew songwriting. Uh, I didn't even know how to count bars. They showed me how to count bars, you know, and they took me in as a child. So my whole childhood, I spent it in the recording studio, writing songs, you know, and um, then from there, you know, I just got better at it. I just got better at it. And then, you know, as the years went by, then, you know, uh, for those who follow the rap scene, know the rap scene is very competitive, you know, then it just got into all. Um, you know, street rapping, rapping against other rappers. You know, you start building a name, you start building, a, you know, momentum. Then that ended up landing me a relationship with, you know, Fat Joe and Terror Squad, where, you know, I was always around them. And uh, then from there, you know, it's just, just been a long journey. 
Wow, that, that is so impressive to be so young and to really understand what you were called to do. And, and it, it's kind of perfect what you're saying because it falls in line with this particular Psalm that um, we've been diving into, Psalm 90, um, is about purpose, right? It's about, uh, is it too late to find purpose? Because there was a situation that happened um, with the people of Israel and they, they really missed out on their entire purpose. God called them for a specific thing and they missed out on it. And so anybody that's watching, you can go back and listen to the commentary. We're not going to go into that right now. But what you're saying is you, you knew, you understood what your purpose was. You knew that you were created to do music and that you wow. were, you, you just went after it. You didn't care that you were nine years old. You yeah. went after it. And that is incredible. Yeah, and let me, thank you, thank you, I appreciate it, and I know, you know, that when God has a purpose and a mission for you, he prepares your heart, you know, he gives you, you know, I call it, I call it, he wraps us in alligator skin, you know, he makes us tough, you know, for all terrain, because as a child, I'll never forget this, right, I think I had a, they set up a show for me, you know, in, in Patterson, I was, I'm a little kid, I'm probably like, around that time I think I'm like 12 13 and you know they um set up this show for me where uh, a rapper named Redman was going to be performing uh in Patterson somewhere I think it was uh Stray Street I forget the name of the place now this is where the rap was like really you know, street extremely street and um here comes this little 12 year old to perform for all these adults that are probably like you know, drunk and all kind of stuff. But, you know, God put the courage, you know, he put the courage, I stepped on that stage, you know, um, I was confident, you know, and it didn't turn out how I wanted to, right? Now, mind you, I'm 12 years old, these people, they're there to see a superstar, it comes to, you know, this kid that was given a chance. So I remember that day, like, you know, I start rapping and I just get fooled by all these adults, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you know, the phone, I didn't get off this, that, the third, but, Man, when God prepares your heart, he guards your heart, yes. you know? <clears throat> he guards your heart, like, but not not for one second, you know? He let any one of those, you know, he let those people reactions enter my mind or my heart, you know, to bring sadness. I was just happy at the fact that I was given the opportunity, you know, to even do it. And uh, when I got off that stage, it, it, it really felt like nothing went wrong, you know? I didn't need no one to come consult me. It felt like nothing went wrong, you know? Yeah. So as a kid, you know, moments like that could really be devastating. You know, you're, 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 you're trying to build, you know, you're dealing with, and um, to get a certain reaction, you know, that might just uh, make you sad or something like that and turn the other way. But, you know, I kept going. That's I kept awesome. going, I kept going, you know, and, um, God opened a lot of doors, you know, I was able to land, uh, you know, me and a partner that I used to rap with at that time named Lord, we had a, a group called Young and Restless, we was able to land, you know, a song on the uh, Cradle to the Grave movie, this, this movie called Cradle to the Grave with Chet Lee and Vicky Max, we were able to land, you know, a record on that soundtrack, uh, Fat Joe was featured on the song with us, uh, you know, and then from there, doors open. We were able to, you know, go to Hot 97 and perform live at Hot 97 with um DJ K Slay, you know, rest in peace. And also DJ Enough opened a lot of doors for us. You know, so I was able to, you know, I was able to hang around artists that I would see on TV, you know, and, and, and it'll be a dream for me. And then going from this little kid that started rapping in a room in 14 Pennington Street with a York's karaoke machine, you know, to now, you know, you're, you're, you're with the, you're with the stars, you know, yeah. and yeah, you're with the stars and, and, and they hear your music and, you know, you build a relationship to then hitting stages um, around a time where, you know, it was not as, I would say it was not as easy as now where you have social media, you know, you can upload a song and, you know, if, if, if you build a fan base, you, you can take off from there. You know, I came from an era where it's like, you really had to be in that place. So we would take tons of trips to New York a day. You know, like we would be in New York City 10 times a day coming from Patterson, uh, you know, because Rough Riders and DMX were at a location and we knew people, 
you know, that they know and they'll invite us or such and such is shooting a video. It's just knocking down doors for opportunities. And uh, we were able to make the noise that we made at that time. Like, you know, if you're from Patterson, you're from Patterson, you know Young and Restless, you know Rick DeNero, um, you know, from that time. So I'm just thankful, you know, but one thing I do know for certain is that God can choose you for a mission. Yeah. You know, God can put a calling on your life, you know, but when God says go, you got to step on that gas, you know? Come on now. When God says go, you have to step on that gas and you have to go, you know, and you have to trust and you have to believe, you know, a lot of the things that God calls us for, we don't understand, you know, when, when, when he told Moses, hey, Moses, I, you know, I want you to go and deliver my people. We know he had a speech impediment. We know he doubted himself because the speech impediment, you know, and uh, he didn't think that he was, he didn't think that he had what it takes for that calling, you know, but God has to remind us, hey, I made you, you know, I'm the one that's telling you, I'm the one that's giving you the order. I could fix anything, right? you know, so um, there's, there's, there's times that, you know, and this is just because I love the conversation we're having. There's times that God put a calling on your life and you know it's God. You feel it. He confirms it. But sometimes you don't want one confirmation. You want a hundred confirmations. Oh my, tell the truth and, now. And, and remember, and, and people got to remember that we were made in God's, you know, in, in God's likeness, right? So just like uh, if you, if, if me, if I tell someone, hey, go do it, I, I know you can do it. Right, and that person questions me a hundred times. I'll probably feel bad. I'll I'll feel sad. Like, remember, we have emotions, and we have feelings. We were made in His likeness. He has feelings. He has emotions. So when we don't believe, and when we don't trust, you know, how does He feel? Right. You know, right. when Jesus, you know, Jesus was on the boat, and 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 the storm came, and you know, He was sleeping. The disciples got, you know, they, they everyone got nervous. Everyone got scared. You know, was the first thing he he, he he did. He looked at them and said, you know, you guys don't see I'm here? You know, you guys lack faith. We have to trust. And we have to know. You know, God gives you a call. And if you feel, you know, being that this is about songwriting, if you feel you have a talent, if you feel God equipped you with a talent, you know, go for it. Just go for it. Believe in yourself. You know, sometimes, and, and, and I can tell people this, Sometimes, you know, you just got to do what you got to do and uh, be careful, you know, with who you ask opinions on. Right. Yeah. Be careful with, you know, who, who you may ask an opinion. Someone, you know, how many kids, how many people told me as a child, man, leave that, don't, don't mess with music, leave that rap stuff alone. That's, you know, there's, there's people that just because they never acted on their calling, you know, they never acted on their purpose. Uh you know, they're not going to embrace you to act on your purpose. Right. They're not going to do it. You know, you have to, you have to look in the mirror. You know, when I was a kid, like, you know, now you got cell phones, you can turn the camera around, do a selfie video. Before it was just a mirror. I used to spend endless hours just rapping in the mirror. And I know that a lot of people could relate from my era. We would stand in front of that mirror and just perform, you know, and imagine that, it was a crowd of thousands in front of you, you know, and you, you have to, you have to build that dream up, you know, to become a reality. Um, and to this day, you know, I'm still doing music, you know, of course, everyone's dream is to, you know, be a mega star and to, you know, be the next big, you know, Grammy award winner. That's what we all shoot for. But one thing I understand clearly is that sometimes you know, yeah, the calling it can be to be a global star. Sometimes the calling is going to be to be a local star. Sometimes the calling is going to be to impact your community directly. You know, but whatever the calling is, just follow. Follow and trust God and be thankful. You know, everyone is not going to be, you know, the Mariah Carey. Or the, but if you have a talent, you know, sometimes I'll go to a restaurant. It's a karaoke. There's someone singing in that restaurant that I feel like could have been a superstar. When I hear their voice and I see, I say, oh my God, this person is amazing. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They're singing for that crowd 
I said they're a Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And they love what they do. And people enjoy what they're doing. You know? Yeah. That's what God called them for. Yeah. We just right. have to be thankful. That's uh, that is so awesome, and you you said so much, um, so much truth in what what you shared, and and it's true, you know. And I think part of how this goes back to Psalm ninety is that you know God called the people of Israel to be free, right? He took he like you said he raised up Moses. Moses doubted himself, but at some point he ended up uh, believing. Okay, I got God on my side. I need to do this. I need to bring these people out. But they didn't believe. They didn't believe. They didn't trust. They had fear. They didn't want to step into what was what God had for them. And because of that, they forfeited. That whole generation didn't make it. They didn't make right. it into the promised land. And and that that is sad that that had to happen. And then God used Moses to write this particular psalm to inspire other generations not to make that same mistake, because. God, when God is with you, who can be against you, right? That, that's what we know. If he's with us, it doesn't matter that there's giants in the land and there's all of these things because he's the one that's going to get us through. And so Moses right. wrote this particular psalm, not for them because they already, they missed out. They missed out on their purpose. But God said, you know, let's make sure that this doesn't happen again. And so they, they preserved this particular song for that and so he wrote this message to help future generations um so i would ask you then what what message is your music now looking to convey to to the, to your listeners to the ones that listen now what what message are you looking to share to them so you know for those that heard my music or you know seeing any of my music videos um ever since i gave my life to the lord you know 2007, um, you know, when I when I came to the church and I just completely devoted my life to Christ, I took a gap, I took a break off, you know, music completely. Like I was just not, you know, I was just fully, 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 um, you know, absorbing the gospel as much as I could. Um, but then, you know, when I made the decision to go back into the music, of course, of course, you know, it's Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's Jesus music. You know, like a friend of mine says, uh, Adam, he says, Jesus music, but the knock raw. You know, in other words, it's like, you still, you know, you still, of course, you're, you're still going to get um, Rick, you know, my, the, the energy, you know, the, um, the, the New York City hip hop elements, uh, you know, the East Coast hip hop elements. But I'm, I'm definitely going to give you a powerful message. You know, I, I have a thing for speaking to the youth, you know, um, growing up in Patterson, New Jersey, it's like, you know, it was rough, you know, as, as a teenager, you know, you have to have that thick skin and, and, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of things that, you know, now that I have, you know, I have boys and, um, you know, they're growing up, I think of it, you know, and I say to myself, you know, a lot of things that I saw and went through, it's not, it's not for, you know, a child to see or go through, you know, it's, it's not to even have to feel with you know and uh i just wanna i just wanna be a voice you know to the youth i want to be a voice you know even to the grown of righteousness you know and 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 not disconnecting you know the message from reality you see because you want people to relate right so at the beginning you were talking and you mentioned the word the struggle right so I created a record for the struggle is real. You know, we come to Christ, you know, and, 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 and I want it to be clear. Um, we come to Christ, we give our life to the Lord. That doesn't mean that the struggle is over. That doesn't mean that the, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, Jesus came into your life or your bills are going to be paid. You know, Jesus came to, to your life. You're not going to have, you know, you're not going to have times where you're worried about something, you know, you mentioned the struggle that they had. Um, the struggle is real for all of us. You know, the victory is that when you trust in God, you know you will not be defeated. You know, how good is it to know that you're going to war, right? And you're not going to war alone. You're going to war, you know, 
with the general general, you know, that you know has your back. You know he's not going to let you die in shame because you went to war in his name, you know. So it's different now, you know, before, before the gospel, you know, before, before, the, uh, you know, I gave my life to the Lord. It's like, you know, you find yourself with a problem and if you don't have the answer to it, you're like going crazy. You know, you, you don't have a remedy, you don't, but now I have, you know, now I have this weapon that's called prayer, you know, and I was taught how to use it, you see, because the general trained me well. You know, so now, yeah, the struggle continues, but I was taught, you know, how to, how to fight in this type of camp. You know, I was taught how to defeat these enemies, you know, that attack us mentally, you know, because this is where God communicates with us, you know, this is where the Holy Spirit talks to us, you know, mind and heart. So now I'm not wrestling physically, but we know, you know. Uh, it's all here. And that's why the, 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 the word teaches to guard your mind because your life depends on it. So ever since I was introduced, ever since I was trained, you know, by the word of God, you know, it's, you know, you got to start your day, you know, start your day with prayer, um, start your day with prayer, you know, but ever since I was trained, it's like, that's my weapon, you know, so I pray. And I know, and I, and, 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 and you receive that power, from God. you know, for those who, you know, who, who have a life of prayer, for those who are the, you know, you feel it, you get the confirmation. It's almost like you feel a tap on your shoulder, you know, telling you, I got you, son. Don't worry. You know, the struggle is real. So in my music, you know, back to it, you know, I don't like disconnecting from reality. You know, as humans out here, we're, we're going to encounter stuff. You know, we're, we're going to have our battles. We're, we're going to have situations, um, you know, where you're going to feel you're, you're, you're going to feel the opposition, you know, and you're going to go through those things. But the word of God should keep us grounded. Mm. It should keep us firm. It should keep us rooted and it should, it should keep us still, you know, yeah. for us not to lose our patience. Let's remember Faith is, you know, faith is what comes through, of course, you know, hearing the word. And that's what, that's a gift from God. But remember the enemy, he has, you know, his weapons as well, which is desperation, you know, for you to lose hope and all sorts of type of emotion, you know. So um, all I can say is when, when I make music, I want you to be able to connect with, you know, and if you hear my music, you might hear some of my struggles. You might hear some of the, you know, the struggles that I go through. I, I created a song for, um, I put a video out for, it's called Someone, where I'm kind of, you know, saying I need, some, the, the chorus says I need someone to talk to, right? Because we all know we have moments where you feel like you're talking and you even talk to God and you don't hear anything, you know? Lots of so, songs on that one, too. <laughs> lots of songs on that one. So yeah. my thing is, you know, I've had those days. So I wrote about it. I want you to know that as a man of God, a man that decided to serve God, you know, I've had those days and this is what goes through my mind. And these are the lyrics, you know, and, and, and I just go into it. You know, I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm going through this. I have a lot of questions. I ask God, but God ain't it's not answering the call. Uh, you know, but at the same time, if you hear the song, you can see, I mean, you, you can hear where I say, I still believe. And I still know, even though you're not answering, I still know. And I'm still going to live by your word. Because even though you're not answering this particular question, your word already answered it for me. You know? That's good. So I'm... Even though I don't hear your voice now, or even though I don't get confirmation now, well, I'm going to hold on to this because this is what was rain. And I know, you know, it's effective. So my songwriting process, you know, is, is I, I love to connect, you know, and, and I feel as an artist, um, 
your song needs to your song needs to impact you first. Right. Sometimes, to be honest with you, sometimes I'm writing a song. It's like I'm writing a song for me to listen. Right. Yeah. Like I'm writing a song for me to listen to, but at the same time, it just relates to so many people. You put it out there, and there's so many people that's going through that. You put it out there, and there's so many people that's like, oh my god, you know, this person, you know, going through this tour. This this person sees it this way, and from an artist, what you expect is, you know, you expect that connection. I would say that the most successful artists we ever seen, you know, are artists that really just put their heart on their, you know, put their heart in their song. Right. You know, let's talk about worship. You know, you lead a worship ministry. Um, when someone writes a worship song, there's worship music that really, really, you know, break you down. There's there's worship music that can take you to repent and receive Jesus. Right. Like worship is so powerful. I love worship. You know, I could worship. We could we could do a, a worship service and be there for hours. I love worship. And when I listen to worship, I thank God for the hearts of the people, you know, that created the song. Because you know when a when a worship song is anointed. You yeah. just know. You know, Lord Jesus, this this came directly from you. And when that song makes you, you know, drop tears, or that song makes you forgive, forgive someone. When that That's song makes, mm-hmm. yeah, like people have to understand there, there's power. So there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in worship. If you hear a worship song and that makes you think, I need to forgive this person, or that, or that, or that song makes you say, I need to get right with God. Mm-hmm. I need to give, I need to give my heart to the Lord. There's songs. That no matter how old they get, when I hear them, it's like the first day. Right. Music has sentimental value. This is why music that we were hearing in the 90s, these people are still touring today. And they're still living off those songs because they have sentimental value. You remember when you were in high school, this was your favorite song. When you had your first boyfriend, this was your song together. You understand? So... I, when I when I create music, I take it serious because I know it could mean something to someone. Right. Years down the line. Yeah. Oh man, this is so good. This is so good. I want to just hear you keep going. So I'm gonna have to bring you back because we yeah. got so much to talk about, and a lot of what you said is so true. And and this message has. It has to go further, right? We need more people to hear what you have to say because you're speaking from your heart and, and it's true. And when God gives you something to 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 release, first it's for you, right? But then because so many people are going through the same thing, that's why they relate to it and they can hook on to that. So I love that that's you said that. Right. That, that's, that's, that's what the deep. psalmist did too. Like, you know, like when you were saying before how you you know you you're crying out to god but you're not hearing him at that moment and and but yet you you cling to to your belief cuz you already know god has answered the prayer he may not be giving a response right at that second but he is right. answering and he will come through and so Amen. a lot of the songs that i've read through already that we've studied had that and it's and it's important because you we can't just because we're going through something temporarily does not mean that God has fallen off the throne, right? Like, no, it's just, no. it's just weird. Sometimes we're being tested, you know, right. sometimes where he's just testing our faith and, and we just got to cling to, to what we know is true. And, and when we do that, we'll see, we'll see the light at the end of the tunnel, but music Absolutely. does play a huge key in, in how, how, we perceive life and how we, you know, how we stand and not like fall when right. those hard times come. Um, right. We have a few more minutes left, um, but I wanted to talk about Christ Jam because it's yes. coming up this weekend. And tell us what that is all about. So, you know, Christ Jam. I was on vacation with my family. You know, this was, a, I would say probably like two years back, right? And, um, I'm just sitting, I'm, I'm just sitting in the room and I literally just see 
you know, it's, it's, it's like a vision. I just see it come across, you know, I just see it come across the sky. And it's like Christ saying, with the same exact, the same way you guys, you know, the same way we put the flyer and the artwork together, same way. It was like graffiti, you know, and I, and I stay thinking and I said, Christ saying, you know, okay, so this is an event. God put it in my heart, you know, a long time ago. And um, just like you said, you know, earlier, God will have a purpose for us, have a calling. We have to follow through, you know. So it's been in my heart for quite some time. And, you know, I just made the decision and said, listen, I got to put this together. The main reason why um, I put this event together is because as a Christian artist, I noticed that there was not enough events. Right. Like I would catch myself looking like, OK, well, what are we doing? Right. Like what's the next Christian concert I can go to or, you know, or what Christian rap concert I can go to, you know, where where uh, I can meet, you know, we can collab or, you know, we can just have a good time in Jesus name. So I noticed that there was there was not many, you know, so then I felt, you know, I felt the order from God where it's like, you know, you don't have to wait for someone to do something, uh, you know, for you to be able to go. If you feel that this, this is, this is something that lacks, you know, for the kingdom, then make it happen. Right. Step you know, <laughs> yeah, step up, yeah. do it. Come on, Moses. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it was just like, step up, do it, you know, put it together, yeah. put Christ hands together, you know, so, um, as the time went by, you know, it, it, it just started coming along you know, formulating, getting together. I know I wanted to do it in the city of Patterson. That I was sure about, you know, to, you know, to start it off the first one. I definitely wanted to, you know, launch it in Patterson. And the purpose of Christ Jam, you know, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, this, this message goes out clear. You know, it's, it's, it's not only for Christians, you know. It's not only, oh, you're, you, you know, we're doing Christ Jam only. No, 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 no. Because when I came to church, right, I was not a Christian, you know, and because I was exposed to his word, because I was exposed, exposed to his love and his greatness, I received God in my heart, you know, so I want Christ Jam to be a day, you know, and the vision was always, I want it to be a day where anyone, anyone that feels that they need a word from God. Anyone that feels that they want to worship, anyone that feels that they want prayer, you know, anyone that's going through something and they need a miracle, they need a breakthrough, please come to Christ Church. Please come there because the people that are going to be performing there are not just performers, you know, some sort of like what we see with some of these stars that it's like, you know, their music says one thing, but their, their life is something different. Mm -hmm. No. Every man that's going to be on that stage, every person that's going to be on that stage can pray for you. Every person that's going to be on there can minister to you. Every person that's going to, you know, that's going to use their talent there can use their gift of God, you know, to bless you. So if you're a parent, you know, and you have, and you have a teenager, you have, you know, kids, and, um, you know, it's tough for you right now, you know, they're, they're, they're in the street or, you know, they're not behaving well. There's gonna be there's gonna be people there that can talk to, you know, that can talk to you to your kids, that can pray for your kids, that can tell them, listen, I was in the street, I was selling drugs, I did time in jail, I went through this, and now God delivered me and this is what I'm doing. See, relate relate. You know, it has to it has to this is how we win, we have to relate with them and get in their hearts. So Christ Sham. Amazing event, you know, thanks to uh, Pastor Charles, uh, King of Kings Ministries, because I brought the, you know, I brought the idea to him. I uh, sat down and explained the vision to him. I told him, hey, listen, God put this in my heart. Um, and ever since, you know, we had that first meeting, it's like, you know, we just, I remember we, we spoke to you that day, like right after the meeting, we came out saying, hey, listen, this is what we're doing. Uh, we're going to do a different type of event. This was months back. You know, and um, now it's a couple of days away, you know, so my whole thing is, God, thank you, you know, because I know that this is something that you, you know, created. And remember, God chooses hearts. 
I'm just I'm just a messenger, you know. But at the same time, um, I want this to be a day of impact. Yes, it's, it's Christ Jam Community Day. We're gonna be helping the kids, you know, with back to school supplies, getting them ready for school, you know, getting them prepared. And I know that you know there's a lot of families that that they would definitely you know need those resources. And um, we're gonna have fun. There's gonna be you know a bouncy house, a lot of fun activities. There's gonna be food. There's gonna be a lot of giveaways. But my prayer for that day, I just want to see a revival. I just, I just want to see a breakthrough. I just want to see the Holy Spirit over. You know, I want people that's just, I want people that's just tired of the abuse that you know the devil has placed on a life just to come there that day and feel like they're in heaven. Like, wow, it just felt so good for these few hours. And I want them to be encouraged to leave from there and say, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to know more yeah. about God. Yeah. You know, that that event, Christ Jam, it, I don't know what it did to me, but it did something to my heart. Mm. That's my prayer for Sunday. Oof. Y'all. If that didn't stir you to come, I don't know what will. <laughs> but listen, Amen. I want to thank you for for stepping up to the plate and and really um, having that vision. Oh, Marilyn says outreach is where it's at, reaching and Amen. meeting the people where they're at. Amen. Amen. Thank you for That's that, girl. Um, I want to I want to thank you for stepping up because you know people wait around for other people to do things. And then they complain about it. Like, how come nobody, you know, how come there's not this and that? Because sometimes God is not waiting on them. They're waiting on you. And that's what you did. You you were like, I don't see these things happening. And you didn't sit back and say, well, you know, it's not happening. So it's not happening. You're stepping up to the plate. And you're taking this to a whole other level that, that you know, we've been doing community days for the last several years. Um, and, and we've, we've done, and we've had a great time, but this is now a whole different level. And, and I want to thank you for bringing your, your vision and your faith and your action to this, because this is what the community needs. This is what, this is how they will see Jesus and Amen. understand that Jesus is with them and is after them and is, Amen. you know, calling them. So thank you for that. I want to thank you for stepping up and, and for all the blood, sweat, and tears that you've poured into this. Um, thank you. Thank you for it. So tell us what time does this start and where it's at. So this way everybody knows and has those details. All right. So Sunday, August 28th, uh, the location is one market street, Patterson, New Jersey. So that's the uh, Dawn Treader Christian School uh, building is there. We're going to be doing it at the parking lot. Um, this is right at the beginning, you know, of Market Street. You have Burger King uh, right behind it. You have the uh, train museum right across the street. It starts at 10 a.m., right? And we'll be wrapping up around 4 p.m. And, you know, if it's expense for 5 p.m., it's whatever God says, but you know, we'll all be night, there. An all night party, an all night party, you know? That's right. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be there and it's free. Okay. Um, that's the first thing God put in my heart. You know, it's a free event. You know, I call it yeah. a day of generosity. Every sponsor that I reached out to, you know, my thing to them was it's a day for us to give. You know, there's not going to be vendor tables trying to sell you anything. You know, I told everyone this is a day. We all got to come together and I don't care if you can give, I don't care if you could give three pair of socks or you could give, this is a day that whatever you can do, you know, let's give back, you know, Amen. but we want, yeah. So, you know, feel free to come, you know, you guys are going to have a good time. Please bring the kids, you know, bring the kids, bring the teenagers. I love when the teenagers come, man, because what a lot of people don't know from, you know, me just dealing with teenagers, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're just trying to find themselves. You know, they're just trying to see where they fit in, mm -hmm. you know. But if you don't give them this option, if you don't give them the option of fitting into Jesus, you know, how, what, what can you expect from them? You know, you want your kids to behave better. You want your, you know, you want your teenagers to behave better. What options are we giving them? On Sunday, please bring them and let them see this option. Amen. 
Ooh, yeah. That's all I'm asking. Amen. Marilyn says, miracle signs and wonders. These are the days praying for this event. Thank you, girl. Please Thank pray you. for us. Marilyn is originally from, from this area and she's from Patterson and she's not in Patterson anymore. Hint, hint. This is where okay. it's happening now. It's back. Mm -hmm. Everything's happening here. But anyway, <laughs> um, but yes, please pray. Help us pray that that God will touch many lives and he will. He is already touching lives. He's already touching people to come together because it's a work that we got to do together. You know, it's not just one person doing everything. It's the body of Christ coming together, serving together that they would see the goodness and the faithfulness of God over their lives. And many people don't have evidence that God is real. Well, here's the evidence. Here's the evidence right. that he's real, right. that he hears our cries, that he is with us, that he's helping us, that he's providing for us. And so we, we are grateful for that. And um, right. Marilyn says it's it's already done. Thank you, Nana. Right. Amen. Amen. So listen, we are going to wrap it up. But Rick, um, thank you for being here again. I'm going to have you come back here at some point because we need to break this down a little bit more and we want to inspire other people that have that gift, but they're, they're just not, they're not sure, you know, they're, right. they're like questioning because like you said, you know, you, people will throw things at you and, and people will say to you, stay away from that. That that's not for you, but look at that. If you would have listened to them, you would not be where you are today. And so, right. you know, but some, some young people don't have the, the conviction to stand up for their dreams. And so we want to yeah. help motivate them and and nurture them um right. to to keep going to do the thing that they've called to do Amen. so i want to have you come back for that thank Absolutely. you for, for being here and let me just um bless our people as as you're watching and you're watching the replay father we just thank you we we pray your blessing over uh this event we, we, we already know that your hand is over it. And we so we just pray for the hearts of the people, those that need to come, that need to hear the gospel, that need to hear truth, Lord, that you would just touch them in a supernatural way. Let this event mark their lives from this point forward. May they never turn back. May they always look to you. May they come to you, give their hearts to you, and live the rest of their lives for you may you create purpose in their hearts during this event in the mighty name of jesus and we just thank you for rick we ask your blessing over him we ask that you would just continue to pour ideas into him and give him the strength to follow through in the mighty name of jesus amen, amen. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his shalom, his peace. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Blessings to everybody. Amen. Thank bless you, Marilyn. You. All right, my brother. God bless you. I'll talk to you, all right? All right, cool. Thank you. God right. bless everyone. Blessings. Bye.